Hi, I'm Colleen Delaney, and let's have a writing chat. So it is almost November, which means a lot of us in the writing community will be starting NaNo very soon. And this is just basically an update video on what I've been working on the last two weeks, what my NaNo is gonna look like this year, and yeah, that's basically it. So before we get to nano, the past two weeks I sort of surprised myself. Um, occasionally I'll get these like lightning bolt ideas that just won't leave me alone and I have to work on them. And that is what happened about 12 days ago. So I had an idea for a monster romance, which is very big right now. And I did read a monster romance after I started um, writing this one. And I've been listening to the new podcast, Bonkers Romance, which has a lot of monster romance episodes. And sort of my brain was just like, remember that idea you had? Let's write it down. And so I did. And it isn't supposed to be a full length novel. Um, in the last 12-ish days, I've written about 18,000 words, which is a lot for me to do, not during NaNo. Um, I am planning on taking the next three days and finishing it because it's going to be about 22,000 words when it's done, I believe. So that's like a short novella. Like I feel like a solid novella is like 30-ish. So it's a pretty short novella. Um, it is a alternate earth setting in which there are human dragon hybrids, werewolves. I haven't completely developed the world yet, but I will before I actually do anything with this. Soulmates is the trope, and it's got some monster love in it, which everyone's really into right now, and I dig it. I like it. Um, I am a really big fan of werewolves. I went through a vampire phase when I was younger, and I was really into Buffy and Angel, but I did sort of leave that behind and go for the werewolves. Like when Twilight was huge, I was working at an independent bookstore then, so I got to fully immerse myself in the twilight craze and like throw a midnight release party for breaking dawn which was very fun just with like 30 of our uh biggest fans who were uh customers who decided that they would come in at 11 30 at night and hang out with us until twilight got released at midnight or not twilight breaking dawn got released at midnight so if you're wondering if i was team edward or team jacob i was obviously team jacob because i i like me a werewolf so i basically spent 12 days just slamming out words and that, that contained several days in which I didn't write anything. So I was getting like 3000 words a day some days, which was awesome. It was amazing. It felt great. Um, it did make me a little worried that I was having such a spurt of writing before NaNo because I do need to really be able to have those kind of writing days during NaNo. So hopefully it will not have affected me negatively and hopefully it was just like a nice warm up. In terms of what I'm going to do with this book when I'm done, I'm pretty certain I'm going to self-publish it. Um, it's too short really to do like the traditional publishing route and I don't really feel like I need to do that with it. I don't know. It just, since I've indie published seven books, question mark, seven books. Yes. I've indie published seven books. Um, I know how to do it pretty easily and I've got like the formatting down and I have a great cover artist who I use who I'd love to give the business to, so I'll probably do that, but it probably won't come out until like spring or summer if I end up even doing that. Nano update now. I did pick a project and uh, it is a story that is adjacent to my witch series. It takes place in the same universe as my witch series. The Hedge Witch is the first one coming out in 2024. It technically takes place after that series and um, but I can write it out of order. It won't really uh, matter that much that I haven't finished writing the first series. Uh, the main characters are Morgan, who is the cousin of the hero in the first book. And we meet briefly in the first book and her love interest. Uh, it takes place in Maine in October and November on the coast, which is part of the reason why I wanted to work on it. Sometimes I feel like it's easier to write seasonally, if that makes sense. I did write my book, Something Wicked, which is a fall Halloween romance in um, May. I wrote Good Enough to Eat, which is my Thanksgiving romance. I wrote the first draft in January, which actually wasn't that difficult because you're still kind of feeling that holiday season 
feel, but then I edited it in July, which was really difficult to like get in that frame of mind when it's sweltering outside here. So I thought it might be fun to write this story during the season it takes place, especially because I don't really need that story to be like done done for a long time. I still have to work on several drafts of book three in the first series. I haven't written book four or five yet. So I wanted to just write this during the season that it takes place in and then I can edit it whenever I need to edit it, whenever I feel like I need to get that done. In terms of my nano prep that I have completed, I actually have a lot done. I'm very proud of myself. This is, I think, the most prepared I've ever been for nano, which gives me a lot of hope that I will complete it since last year I was not able to. To start, I have uh, done my beat sheet, which if you watched my video on how to prep for nano, which I'll link up there, it talks about um, two different books that I should have grabbed off my shelf. I'll be right back. I'm back. So two different books that are really helpful when you are outlining a story. And the first is Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. And the second is specifically for romance writers and it is Romancing the Beat by Gwen Hayes. So what I do when I write a romance is I make an Excel or numbers um, document and I have one column in which I put all the Romancing the Beat plot beats, which I always do this one first when I'm writing a romance. If it's not a romance, I'll do Save the Cat first or just Save the Cat. And then I do a column next to it where I do all the Save the Cat beats, which are slightly different. Um, when you write a romance with a lot of fantasy elements, I think it is helpful to have both. So I have completed that. I have my plot beat points for both of these done. I also like to, um, in a third column, go chapter by chapter so that, and that doesn't, oh, that will not stick through the entire story. Like my chapters will get reorganized depending on what chapters when I'm writing feel like need to be longer, shorter, if do I need to have a chapter in the um, both heroes, both main characters, POVs for this particular scene, stuff like that will change. But I just have a list of chapter numbers and what I want to happen in each chapter and whose POV we're gonna be in since I do write in dual POV 80% of the time. I have also created my playlist, which I actually created that playlist in, I wanna say August because I just, really felt drawn to this story then, like I wanted to write it. So I created my playlist. I created my aesthetic, which I will pop up here so you can see, you can look at all the beautiful pictures that I have picked and made into this aesthetic to try to get people interested in this book. Isn't Jai Courtney handsome? <laughs> I have purchased my candle that I will be lighting every time I'm writing. It is from Target. I'm also going to grab it so I can show it to you. Okay, it's called Believe in Magic. It was the last one they had left in my Target, so I don't know if you can really find it. It smells good and creepy, and the scent, when I smelled it, I was like, I don't know what that is. And I'm very into candles, so I'm usually pretty good at like deciphering what a scent is. The scent is cobwebs and ashes which once you meet the heroine of this story, you'll be like, sounds perfect for her. <laughs> the next two things I think are kind of the most important when you're going into nano, and that is that I have a writing plan. My plan is that on the days my um, preschoolers are at school, I will get at least 30 to 45 minutes of writing done while they're at school. I will also try to write every afternoon while they are having their quiet time before my older kids get home from school. So I'm thinking I will write most days around 9.45 in the morning and then again around one o'clock in the afternoon. I will also try to write most nights from 7 p.m. till 7.30 or 7.45, right before I put my kids to bed. Then I also always have the option of putting my children to bed and writing from like eight until nine at night if I need it. I don't love to write in the evening, partially because I have some insomnia issues and staring at a computer screen when it is dark outside is not good for my brain in terms of unwinding and falling asleep. Uh, before I had children, the first book I ever wrote to completion um, it's terrible, but I did write it to completion and I did query it and nothing ever happened, obviously, because it's not good. It's not well written. I finished writing it at three in the morning on a work night. 
at that point I was working like a noon to nine shift at the bookstore, but um, yeah, I finished it. I remember being so jazzed I had actually finished it. And it was like a 400 page book. It was really long. And then I couldn't fall asleep till like five in the morning. And then I woke up at like 10.30 and went to work. I can't do that anymore. I have small children that wake me up and they wake me up throughout the night. I need my brain to kind of relax in the evening. So I have my schedule with a lot of daytime writing. Obviously, if I need to, I can sneak some words in at night. And lastly, I have my writing friends ready. I have one friend in particular who is definitely on board for Nano. We are uh, both romance writers. We are each other's critique partners, which I've talked about in other videos about what that means. Someone who you have a close relationship with and goes over your work with you in depth. So we will be able to motivate each other. And then two of my uh, best friends in life and from college are both on the fence as to whether or not they'll do nano but even if they don't do it i know that they will be great at motivating me if you would like to follow along my nano journey and have me follow along yours that would be fantastic i am in the nano remo system as lucy hudson my former pen name because that's when i started really getting into doing nano a few years ago when i was right under that name i will link my profile as well as where you can sign up for nano in the description so if you want to friend me that would be fantastic we can motivate each other i am extremely competitive so if i see someone getting more words than i am the next day i'm going to kill my word count that's just how my brain works so i hope you enjoy the last weekend before nano starts if you celebrate halloween have a fun halloween i hope it's super autumnal and windy and creepy wherever you're living Thank you.